Let's inject some warmth into this cold winter. And what better way to do that than by using a blunt and a syringe? Hi, I'm Irene, and in this session, I demonstrate Diamine's fountain pen ink, Autumn Oak. To help with that, I'm using a fountain pen that was recently gifted to me, the FPR Himalaya V2. Both of these items were sneak peeked in a previous video, but now I get to show them in action. FPR stands for Fountain Pen Revolution, which is an online pen retailer that describes itself with the phrase, the home of affordable fountain pens. They specialize in pens that are made in India. During my info gathering process, I came across a number of pen people praising FPR for their flex nibs. Now, this is not a flex nib. It's a fine nib. The cap and body are made of ebonite. The cap is the screw-on type, and a screw-in converter was included. Interestingly, while reading the description on their website, it says this model does not accept ink cartridges. I hadn't ever encountered that feature before, or should I say non-feature, but I have no problem with that. I have enough pens that can use cartridges. Although I've yet to use an ink cartridge, I do plan to experiment with that option in future. So I'm not bothered about this particular pen being non-cartridge compatible. You just saw me apply some lubricant to the converter threads. That's not something I usually do with a first-time use, but I'd come across some online comments regarding leakage, so I figured it wouldn't hurt to take precautions. Also in my research, I came across claims that FPR pens can take some fiddling to get them to work properly. It's no secret that I'm timid about that sort of thing. Sure, I've been fountain penning for a year now, but pulling out a toolbox and tinkering with pen parts is not something I'm comfortable with. So I wished for luck and proceeded with the session. The filling process went fine. It's just a regular twist action piston converter. What I do is fill it with a syringe, then give the knob a few twists to push the ink through the feed. That's become my usual process, and it usually works fine. But with this pen, the ink wasn't reaching the tip of the nib, and I realized it was coming out of the breather hole instead. Look, I'm not an expert, which is why I like to watch other channels such as Doodlebud. I don't know if he's an engineer or a machinist, but he sounds like he knows what he's doing. And I remembered watching one of his videos where he used feeler gauges to adjust a nib. Fortunately for me, I was given a set of feeler gauges some months ago, so I started with the thinnest gauge and went on to use the second and third thinnest to widen the slit between the tines of the nib. I probably could have gone further, but I was being cautious, and it turned out that was all that was needed. My apologies that I don't have footage of that process, but if you're curious, check out Doodlebud's video linked in the description. I pretty much just did what he did. I like to approach a product with some sort of knowledge, whether it's from a blog review or a first impressions video. So yeah, I did do some Googling ahead of time. Gotta admit, though, in this case, the I had to disassemble the works, remove the discombobulator, and throw in a three-quarters pinkney flange sort of comments worried me. But the issues I encountered were actually minimal and easily fixed. Who knows? Maybe you'll see me grinding down my own nibs soon. Yeah? Now that's a scary thought. My point is, don't let those stories scare you off. 
I'm not a tinkerer. I only played one in World of Warcraft, yet I managed to tweak my way to a properly functioning Himalaya V2. And trying it out again a week later, which is when I'm recording this voiceover, it still works fine. No issues at all with either flow or leakage. In case you're confused by V2, that just means version 2. Uh, sort of like how advertisers used to use the phrase, new and improved. It means the kinks in the original version have been worked out, or at least some of them. There's also a GT descriptor on the listing, and that just means it has gold tone accents. Look, I know a lot of you already know that. I'm just taking the newcomers into account. We were all beginners at one time, right? This pen is listed on the FPR website for $35. I don't consider that expensive. I also don't consider that inexpensive. In my opinion, this Himalaya V2 is not a bad pen. Also, in my opinion, it's not a particularly good one. But here's the thing. This may be a case of everything coming down to the nib, because from what I've gathered, it's with their flex nibs that FPR really shines. And when it comes time for me to explore flex nibs, I may come back to this company. But for now, I'm more happy with some $20 pens, such as the Hongdian Black Forest, which just checking my notes, uh, it took zero tinkering to work. Wait, did Hong Dian change their name to Asfine? Why? Of all the things to name yourself, why Asfine? So those are my thoughts on the pen. Uh, let's move on to the ink. This autumn oak ink from Diamine is a sort of orangey brown. At first, it seems like a very normal, maybe even boring color. Personally, I think it's a lovely shade that straddles an autumnal brown and a brighter, almost citrusy orange. I don't know, maybe I'm just craving a box of Juicy Cuties Clementines, but that's not the end of the story. As I sampled this ink across multiple brands of paper, I noticed some really attractive shading going on. To those new to fountain pen inks, shading is when you get varying color strength. This can happen from word to word, from letter to letter, or even within a single letter. It's a subtle characteristic that's appreciated by many ink lovers. Oops, you might be wondering, but Irene, where was the video for Diamine's Oxblood ink? Hmm? That was actually going to be this upload, but when I was reviewing the footage, I realized it would be more appropriate for closer to February. Just reasons. So I fast-tracked this session. Uh, no, Autumn Oak isn't any more timely, I guess, but we work with what we have. And I wanted to get these things up on the channel before diving into some other things. The point is, Oxblood will be seen in a future video. Oh man, I almost said there will be blood. Feeling like I should make a milkshake reference. But since I'm now shuddering at the juxtaposition of ox blood and milkshakes, I'll let it pass. This last sample was done with not the Himalaya V2, but rather a Kakimori brass nib. I like using it as it's convenient for ink testing and sampling. But wouldn't that make a great band name? Live at the Hollywood Bowl, the Kakimori Brass Nib Band. They would dress like 1980s Duran Duran and play jazz slash J-pop fusion. Hey, don't blame me. Blame the Japanese for my existence.
I'm happy to share this pen and ink experience. You may have noticed that I filled a green pen with orange ink. See, I don't have to be matchy-matchy, which is usually my excuse for wearing one blue sock and one pink sock. Look, life is too short, and with all of those catchy acronyms going around, TLDR, FOMO, YOLO, TSTL, why isn't there one for life is too short? For example, you could say LITS to go around making up new acronyms. Until next time, check your breather holes, use your feeler gauges, and spread apart, see, my friends.